Hi, I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Lab. There is some research that suggests that spending an hour a day with green light can reduce your fibromyalgia pain, maybe your migraines, by up to 50%. And if that's true, that is something really important to talk about because that would be a very easy treatment that people can incorporate. So I'm going to talk about that today and discuss one of the relatively recent research projects looking at that. First, I'm going to show my disclosures. I'm going to start showing disclosures before every video I do, and that's because about five days ago, I was watching a video on YouTube about a medical treatment, and I got to the end of the video, and I realized I had no idea who was talking, if they were affiliated with the company, if they were making money from what they were saying, and then I thought about it a little bit more, and I realized I'm not even sure it was a real person's voice. I think it was AI. And I think that's problematic when we're talking about scientific medical information. So I don't want to contribute to that problem. So I'll put up the disclosures for just a second. You can pause them if you want, uh, but I'll do that behind every video. And I just the bottom line is I have no conflicts of interest, but you can look at them if you want to. So let me put those up now. And now I am green. So this is the green light that we're talking about. This is regular green light. This is 525 nanometers, just standard. It's not triple distilled light. It's not mutant light. It's just green light that you can find quite easily. And now I'm going to turn this off. Um, by the way, this bulb is faced away from me, and I have the other lights on in the room. So this is not what it would actually look like. If you were using green light for phototherapy, the green light would be the only source of light and everything would look very, very, very green. But I am going to turn that off. So we've known for decades, maybe centuries, that colors that you use in your environment affect your emotional state. Uh, we know quite a lot about that, hundreds and hundreds of studies showing that. That's the reason why when you go into a hospital, they tend to use the same color schemes with white or off-white and a light blue or a light green or a light gray as contrast. There are certain colors you will never see in a hospital because certain colors can affect your emotional state. So there's nothing unusual about that. We know colors affect your emotion. That is not what we're talking about with green light phototherapy. It's not just about calming you down because it's a a nice color. This is about the light in that particular spectrum, in that particular part of the visible spectrum, hitting your retina, traveling down the optic nerve to the visual part of your thalamus, and interfacing with different parts of your brain, like the anterior cingulate cortex and a few others, to evoke changes that can reduce your pain. They can cause the release of endogenous opioids, which are natural killing chemicals, maybe release GABA, which can release or reduce anxiety, and may even change inflammatory systems. And all these can help reduce pain. So that's what we're talking about with green light therapy. Now, the pros are pretty obvious. As you can imagine, this is really, really easy. You just need a green light source that can basically fill up the room that you're in. These are very cheap. Even the specialized ones, even the research ones, are fifty dollars. Uh, if you had a big room, maybe a hundred, but most people fifty dollars would get you there. And even if you didn't use the specialized ones, if you use just like a, a non-research specialized bulb, you can find them for probably ten dollars or twenty dollars, like basic LEDs. Uh, the nice thing about the scientific research ones is they've controlled for the exact frequency spectrum or the exact frequency that the research projects use, but we don't know for sure that that's necessary. But anyway, in any case, it's pretty inexpensive. It's highly controllable. You can take these bulbs anywhere you go. Uh, you know, I can show this to you. It's, they're very small. You can have bulbs or you can have strips that you can put around the walls. Lots of ways you can do it. Different studies use different bulbs. But again, this is pretty standard stuff. There's no adverse effects of green light therapy that we know of. So that's always a plus as opposed to medications that can have a lot of side effects. And if you, for some reason, can't use a bulb, like you don't have a power source available and you want to use it on the go, there are some studies that actually use tinted sunglasses that have the green light hit your eye 
that way. You have to have a good source of light outside, but that may work better in some circumstances. So let me show you the paper here. This is uh, this was published in Pain Medicine. This is a journal I've published in many times. I think my first lotus naltrexone study may have been in Pain Medicine, but anyway, very good journal. The name of the study is Green Light Exposure Improves Pain and Quality of Life in Fibromyalgia Patients, a Preliminary One-Way Crossover Clinical Trial with a large group of uh, collaborators there. So what they did is they had just over 20 fibromyalgia patients, and they gave the patients the LEDs to take home and to use for 10 weeks. That was the treatment. So these 20 or so, I think 21 patients, went under four conditions. They first had a baseline period where they rated their normal fibromyalgia pain from zero to 10. And I think they had a fibromyalgia pain of about 8.5, which is pretty significant. Then they would do white LED. That was the control condition because we don't expect white light to help anything because that's close to what we get normally. So after their baseline, they'll do 10 weeks of white LED, show their pain again, then they'll do another baseline, then they'll do 10 weeks of the active therapy, which is the green LEDs. And the treatment was an hour to two hours a day, stay in a room with that LED on. You can read, you can do tasks, whatever you want. You don't have to meditate or sleep or anything like that. Just have your eyes open and just do stuff in the room. Uh, you can you can read with a green LED. It's It'll affect people differently, whether you find that comfortable or not, but it's something that you can do. And certainly a lot of people did that. So that was the therapy. And let's talk about what happened. This is the main result picture right here. And so that first gray bar you're looking at is the baseline pain. And as I mentioned, it was about 8.5, which is pretty typical of fibromyalgia and pretty severe. So very debilitating cases of fibromyalgia. Then they did the 10 weeks of white LED and we saw no real change in their pain. It didn't go down. We wouldn't expect it to. I do note that there are a couple people down here that seem to have had a good response during the white LED. We don't know why. It could be that they just naturally got better at that time. It could be a placebo effect, or it could be that for some reason the white light actually helped them. Maybe they weren't getting enough light, and so there was some assistance there. But in general, for most of the fibromyalgia patients, white LED helped. Then the patients did another baseline, which is that second gray bar. And then finally, they did 10 weeks of green LED. And that's where we see the substantial reduction of fibromyalgia pain. They went from uh, about 8.5 to, I don't know, about 5. And that's about a 40% reduction, which is really good. And a, a lot of the fibromyalgia patients actually had a reduction down to 4. And that's over a 50% reduction in their fibromyalgia pain. And that's really good just for a light uh, used an hour a day. Now, it is important that the treatment doesn't require hours and hours and hours a day. And so they looked at, does it work better if you're exposed to the light less than an hour and a half versus more? And basically, there's no difference. That means the people who stayed in the room with the light for closer to an hour, they got the same benefits as people who stayed in the room with the light for closer to two hours. And that means that the extra hour probably isn't necessary. And that's really good to know. How much lower can you go below an hour? I don't know. It'd be nice to look at 30 minutes and see, do you lose efficacy at 30 minutes? If not, hey, 30 minutes is even easier. So uh, I think future research will probably look at all of those things. Now, is this placebo effect? Um, probably not. And that's because most of the research has actually be, have been done in animals where we don't I think there is a placebo effect. And the, the mechanisms have been described. There are multiple pathways by which the green light can cause the reduction of pain and pain sensitivity. I'm not going to go into those animal studies, but we might do that in the future. But the, the evidence looks pretty convincing. This is a true neurobiological uh, phenomenon invoked by the green light. Now, I wanted to know myself, does it change your mood at all? Because there's at least one study showing that it can help you fall 
asleep faster. You know, light, you're generally not supposed to be exposed to too much of it before you go to sleep, especially blue light. It's very problematic and keep you up. But this one study suggested that green light is the one part of light that can make you go to sleep faster. And I was just curious. I want to know, well, okay, if I sit in the green light for a while before I go to bed, do I sleep easier or more deeply? Um, so I thought I would try this. So I took the bulb home to try. Green is my favorite color. I love green. So I thought it would be relaxing. So I tried it. Uh, when I tried it, I did not feel like I was walking in a forest of green trees in a nice sunny day. I felt like I was in a ghost house and Voldemort was coming to get me. So I found it pretty eerie and definitely it wasn't something that put me at peace in any way. And so uh, if it did work to reduce pain, I don't think it's because of a calming kind of aesthetic, uh, you know, easing kind of the color itself, making people feel relaxed. I, I do not believe that's the case. I think if it is working, it is via a different, more neurobiological mechanism. So what do I think about the research? Um, there's not enough of it, especially in humans. There's only a handful of projects or studies that have been published, all very small sample sizes. So we're just not sure if this is legitimate or not, but it looks intriguing. There's a handful of fibromyalgia studies and a handful of migraine studies. The migraine stuff is really interesting because you know, if someone's having a migraine attack, they will retreat to their room and block out all light, what we call photophobia, because the light can exacerbate the migraine attack. You just can't tolerate it. But at least one study is suggesting that there's an exception to that, and that's green light. And so if you have a migraine attack, you may be able to turn on green light. And not only can you tolerate the green light, but it may actually reduce the severity and the longevity of that migraine attack or the duration of that migraine attack. So I can't vouch for that. There needs to be more work, but it is something that a research group is looking into. So super, um, super interesting. But in general, there's not enough research. There's not enough people who have gone through this protocol. And so we need to see more. Um, if I saw three groups, three independent research groups doing the same thing and getting the same results, I'll have a lot more confidence and I can say, hey, this is something that's worth trying, but we're not quite there yet. There's no real randomized control trials, and that's because it would be really hard to do a randomized control trial of green light. You can't fake green light. You People will know if they're getting something else. And sure, you can use a different color for a control in a control trial. So you do green and then do purple or white or orange or whatever. But the fact is, is that well over half of your participants are going to go on the internet and they're going to find out in about 30 seconds that green light is the one that's supposed to work. And you can't keep people from doing that. So it's going to be very hard to do clinical trials with green light. Another problem I have is that regular sunlight is mostly green light. So your control condition needs maybe needs to be sunlight because your green light has to do better than regular sunlight because we already have regular sunlight. Now that's hard to use because you can't control the weather, um, but there are bulbs that kind of emulate sunlight. So I'd like to see more colors as well. This is what I'm showing you right now is the visible spectrum. And this is hypothetical pain in red, say with the bottom being zero and the top being 10. I would love to know, does the pain go down right at green and that's it? Or like in this case, is it more gradual or are there multiple peaks and troughs? Uh, we, we don't know because usually the research only tests a couple of different colors, the active and then the control. So I'd be interested. What, is, what does blue-green do, for example? Does that not work at all or does it only work half as much as green? These are things that would have to be tested. So again, the quality of the human research is poor. That's nothing wrong with the studies that are published. It's just there's not enough of it. But the animal research does boost confidence. So where do we sit now? We just have to see more research. But the suggestion that you can spend an hour a day with green light and reduce your pain by half that is super interesting and intriguing. So I, I'm glad to know that this research is ongoing. We'll see some more uh, publications about that soon. 
And then it makes me wonder, well, what about things like pain? What about chronic fatigue? Would it help that? We have no idea. I've not seen that study and I can't even guess what would happen until we, until we do it. It may be that it's just helping pain. So it's more like fibromyalgia and it would not help myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome or MECFS. Maybe it won't, but maybe it would. It's, it's worth trying. Um, in terms of caveats to using this, uh, I, again, I can't recommend you use it because I can't recommend you use any treatment. Um, again, we're not aware of any side effects. The caveats are just normal stuff with using a bulb. Don't stare directly at a light. These green lights get very bright, as with any light, and I'm sure they could damage your eye if you're staring at a light that's too bright. Um, so normal common sense there. Um, get an LED light instead of one of the old-fashioned bulbs that heat up. You don't want to bring something close to your bed and have it heat up and catch the covers on fire or some have some kind of fire um, hazard risk. So that's all, the only two I can think of is just treat it with common sense. It's, it is a light and it has all the same properties as, as a normal um, light bulb. I don't think you have to go to your doctor to ask if you use a green light. I mean, as I was a, when I was a kid, I had colored bulbs in my room for fun. And so there's really nothing unusual about this. But but if you do want to know your physician's opinion, go you can discuss it. They will probably not have much to say about it because there's just not a lot of information available. So I'll keep my eye on this research, so to speak, and I'll let you know if there are any developments. And tune in next week and I'll have more to talk about with the current and fatigue and cognitive disruption research. I'll see you then.